I'm gonna make a bold prediction here. What I feel is that at some point, once Bun reaches node compatibility or maybe like, you know, a little bit before that, they're gonna release their own environment. Something which where you can deploy stuff. Basically, what I feel like is what Vercel did with Next.js, Bun is gonna do with Node. There is a new runtime for JavaScript which is now available. This is made by Amazon and it's called as LLRT. Now, if you look at their GitHub page, you're gonna see that this LLRT stands for Low Latency Runtime, is a lightweight JavaScript runtime designed to address the growing demand for fast and efficient serverless applications. So let's try to understand like what this is exactly and why this was needed in the first place. So if you look at the whole JavaScript runtime scenario, Westboss posted this tweet which said like there are about 14 JavaScript runtimes now available. So there are a lot of ways to do it. There are certain engines like V8, WebKit, SpiderMonkey, they are not exactly a replacement for a runtime, but they provide the ability to execute something. So Node.js, for example, uses V8 as a engine, as a JavaScript engine for executing it. Bun, however, uses JavaScript core as an engine, but Node.js and Bun both are runtimes, right? So they are able to execute JavaScript. Similarly, Dino is also a runtime, WorkerD is a runtime and so on. So there are a lot of runtimes available now and you can pick up any runtime based on how you want to use it or you know what you're use cases and there is a new runtime to this party known as LLRT. So LLRT says that it offers up to over 10 times faster startup and 2x lower cost which is like they are not something which you can you know reduce for example a company who's spending like five thousand ten thousand dollars on lambdas every month this is a huge deal right you're saving you're just halving your cost right so it's built in rust it uses quick js as the engine right so here's what we saw that bun is built on webkit node is built on v8 so this one, the LLRT one, is built on QuickJS as the JavaScript runtime. If we talk a little bit about stats, you can see that cold starts on LLRT are crazy good compared to normal JavaScript. For 128 MB RAM Lambda, this stat means that what happens in the best case scenario. So in the best case scenario, when you are invoking this, it would take about 48 milliseconds as a cold start thing. Cold start is basically time wasted for your engine or itself, like when you write nodes, space script.js and hit enter by the time your script starts executing it has to do a lot of things like it has to boot up the engine it has to read your script file it has to like analyze like what line of code to run first and you know do all sorts of those things that time is said as cold start thing right so llrd takes 50 milliseconds roughly 48 milliseconds whereas node.js 20 takes almost like half a second this is like an amazing improvement right in the best case scenario if you talk about the worst case scenario which is p100 it still takes 85 milliseconds which is 30 milliseconds more but in case of node.js it jumps to like 167 which is like you know 1.6 seconds so the difference is not huge in terms of just lambda for example but if you take a look at http column here you're gonna see that it jumps from all the way from one and a half seconds to three seconds for node but here here, in terms of lambda it just increases by 150 milliseconds now I mean it's fair to say like this also doubles and this also doubles but given that this is already 10x more efficient the doubling of this in absolute terms is far less than the doubling of this right a user will feel a lot more when subjected to one and a half seconds of delay in the best to worst case compared to just 150 milliseconds of delay in the best to worst case over here in warm starts however you can see that it's not a huge margin so node.js is roughly there in fact in the http column it actually beats the llrt engine that's why like i said because node.js if you're using for anything which you want ultra low latency and all of that you need to keep your node.js instance warm right and the more and more your code runs the more v8 understands like how it can fast path your code and you know execute your programs faster it's it's usually beneficial if you're running it on an ec2 for a long time because then your code becomes very performant but nonetheless if we take a look at the worst case in warm start also it still beats node.js right so by a factor of at least 2x so again aws amazon answers this question key why are we even building something like this when node.js bun and dino exist so again like the biggest selling point of them is that it just fast start that is what their thing is they're saying that llrt distinguishes itself by not incorporating a jit compiler which is what comes built in with node and all a strategic decision that yields two significant advantages once you have removed jit compiler it reduces the complication the cpu and memory resources are also freed up but an obvious disadvantage here is that if you are running anything which is like 
a long running task, this would not outperform Node.js in the long run, right? So in, in, in a matter of like few seconds. But that's the thing, this LLRT is not made for long running tasks, right? For example, Lambda Edge, let's take example of Lambda Edge, right? It's a way for you to modify the request. One of the use cases of Lambda Edge is that you can just modify the request before hitting the origin server. So in that case, something like LLRT would be a lot more proficient, a lot more efficient compared to Node.js or Cloudflare functions or, you know, anything in, in in a way people are comparing it with bun like you know a bun replacement or this that i don't think that's the case of course because it's not what bun is doing it's a completely different thing altogether and most importantly it's built for aws lambdas it's specifically tailored for aws lambdas now here's the thing here's the thing which you have to keep in mind is that this is not compatible with node.js completely like it's not a hundred percent drop in replacement that you are running something on node.js and you can just replace it with llrt and this is basically the thing with anything that comes up new whether that's dino whether that's bun whether that's you know any sort of new engine is that they are mostly not compatible with node.js so you can see that streams for example they mention that it's not a native thing it's not natively built into the runtime it's they are somehow polyfilling it in a way like node.js has native stream support but they are not probably using it as a native module then a clock icon just means that they have a planned partial support so they haven't built fs for example but they have somehow built fs from so I'm not exactly sure like how does that happen, but they are, they have like planned support for it. HTTP and HTTPS are not supported. They say that you have to use fetch for it, which makes sense in case of Lambda because I mean, you are not really starting an HTTP server inside a Lambda, right? That's the job of API gateway or, you know, any other thing, any other component outside of that. But yeah, of course, this is not a drop in replacement and this checkbox and across other modules is it's a uh, you could overlook this but this is this could be a make or break factor for example maybe something related to dns is not supported dns resolution or maybe some underlying low level networking stuff which is not supported so that's that's one of my things one of my complaints in a way with a lot of software which tries to replace node.js is that they try to be faster they try to be better in terms of execution but none of them are actually truly replacements of node bun is really trying to be that and i am really for those guys and bun is one of the most promising technologies out there which is not just like orders of magnitude faster but they are approaching node compatibility as well the last time we checked it wasn't but i mean like i see the releases from bun team all the time so i just don't know like at what point you can just replace node and completely use bun but i'm gonna make a bold prediction here see bun itself is a company it's an organization which has received which has raised funds as well it's not a non-profit thing it's not something like you know which is a community driven effort i mean of course community participates but it is really really pushed by a few people at bun working on the runtime itself right because it's a company because it's a startup at some point they would start making money right now they have just completely open source bun they have just you know just they have done everything publicly in you know in on a public github repo what i feel is that at some point once bun reaches node compatibility or maybe like you know a little bit before that they're gonna release their own environment something like this something which where you can deploy stuff basically what i feel like is what Warcell did with nextjs bun is gonna do with node right and the inherent advantage they have just like Versal has the advantage that you know they can best optimize the stack for Next.js for deployment bun at some point i think they would also find out a few parts where they can optimize your bun scripts in such a way that this matrix which you see right now uh, over here the speed matrix this would sort of become a joke right even this one and that would be really really impactful not for llrt or anything but for Cloudflare because Cloudflare uses Cloudflare workers in the past they have tried and they have like come up with a you know a lot of solutions for introducing or at least introducing some level of support for Node.js modules but when that happens when that my bold prediction comes true let's say then bun can not only just run anything and everything node can but it can also run it extremely fast without this penalty of almost like three seconds. So I, I mean, this, this is something which I'm predicting, which is supposedly a great business model for something like bun because one of the things which nobody is able to do so far is provide the completeness of Node.js, but the benefits of Cloudflare D, for example, the worker D, like the worker runtime, which Cloudflare has with, which has like basically zero uh, cold start problem. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know in the comment section, what do you think about 
this new runtime. That's all for this one. Make sure you like and subscribe. And I'm going to see you in the next video very soon.